Yeah, you are getting this great stereo spread. Is it? Well, it's what you're getting through your pedals running into the. To show me yeah, your signal change. Yeah, because here's the thing with stereos. I've never been a big stereo fan because uh, when I see someone running basically two of the same exact, exact amps, and then the only thing that makes it stereo is the fact that something's ping ponging back and forth. Yeah. To me, it's like okay, that's a stereo image sorta, and so I always kind of stayed away from it. But honestly, what got me thinking about it was. Uh, I did a, a a show, and I used their amps, and it was two different amps behind me. And when I heard it with nothing, just the two different amps, I was like, yeah. "Well, that's what stereo is. Yeah. That's two different sounds on each side of the mix right. before you start ping ponging things or having a chorus or whatever that makes it." Well, and the other thing I and I, I'm still avid about this is, if you're going to record stereo, the problem with it is it's going to get some mono. Unless, yes. unless the producer specifically wants a stereo guitar sound, they're going to have to sum you to mono, and that could create problems later. Sure. So in general, like when I do my record or something, I'll do it this way. Um, but nine times out of ten, when I do tracks for people, never. Unless they ask for a specific stereo pass, because then where do you put it? you got delays yeah. banging back and forth, and it's right. like, yeah, but we want the guitar over there. It's like okay, well, you got to sum the whole thing over, and then and then what? How does the delay sound? Probably weird. And yeah, yeah. So I and once again, the stereo guys are going to come at me like, but that's you know that's just my opinion it, on the matter. Well, it does <laughs> it, but it does make a big issue in, yeah. in mixing because yes. yeah, because engineers want it like where they want they want it yeah. almost like it's it's visual. You kind of see absolutely a player there and a there and yeah, because I've always got you know, even when I send a rough mix of anything I've worked on, I. I Pan things. It's like, well, the guitar sounds great there. I don't like it over here, yeah. but it's great over there. Well, what if it was a stereo pass? It's like, yeah. oh. And you know, there's sound, and you know, there's obviously mix engineers that are brilliant that'll make that work. Yeah, yeah. You know, it gets me or people like you know, you see those those little pictures of like Neil Young or even like Tom Petty, and mm -hmm. because they would have just like all those amps behind them, yeah. you know, or Eric Johnson, you know, yeah. one of them, oh, all yeah. those amps. Yeah. And I mean, I would think like. Phase it and whatever would get in their way, and it. Oh, and it probably does. It but probably I, does. But they, yeah. I mean, they sort it out. But those kind of cats are, are wanting uh, the blend, and that's what yeah. it is for me. Like these two amps sound pretty different, and by themselves they're okay. But for some reason, sure, they sound fabulous together. And yeah. Josh Smith is another guy. He's like, I like a Fender over here, and I like you know a British like EL84 amp over here. Yeah, it's not necessarily stereo, really. Right, but it's the the two. Tones combined just sound great. Yeah. So I'm I'm changing a little bit on on the stereo thing, but yeah, like right now, even this, yeah. this is not that stereo to me of an image. I mean, because the, no. the delay is straight up, and the reverb, it's stereo, but it's not, you know. So, okay, so take us through this board. What are we? Yeah. What like your whole signal chain? What are we doing? Okay, so. The, the switcher is the main thing of the gig rig, which is the new G3 that, that Daniel made, is just insane. So that's basically the mother ship on this whole deal. Yeah. Um, I had the board wired by the boys over at XDS. Oh, they're yeah. in Nashville. God, they're so good. Yeah. Um, so uh, it, everything gets routed through that. Uh, the, the chain actually starts with the Octoland because I don't want that thing getting hit with anything, no buffers, nothing. So it actually starts there and then goes to the tuner. And the Octoland, hit, hit that one, which is like a now, here's, fuzz Yeah, octave. now here's the thing with Octoland, is I don't use it for a fuzz. I use it more for uh, light. And the reason I'm dialing it that way is because I, I like to have it hit an overdrive pedal like the tilt. So, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So is, there, is there any octave in it? Like, no, I can, I can do that. But, but you don't. Yeah, I mean, but yeah, if I, if I turn the octave on. Especially if you do like the more kind of. Yeah. It's like I love that kind of stuff. I, you know, and by itself, if it's, and you know, like I said, by itself. Cool. You know, it's doing what it's supposed to do. But that's the thing, I can just reach down 
and either turn the octave on or off. But for the most part, I like it. Yeah. It just sounds like the amp's working a little hard. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's what I'm doing with that. And you know, it was it was tough. I mean, we can talk about the overdrive pedals, you know, because the tilt is mine. Oh yeah. Okay. Let's take take us through. So. The first thing, and so every pedal is routed through the G3. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so the, the tilt is mine, and, and the problem with the tilt is because I can do so much with it. Okay, tell me about the tilt. Yeah, the, the tilt overdrive is, is kind of my thing that I did with Rev. It's a signature pedal, and that one is kind of based around the sound in my head. Like, the type of gain I like is, is that. Kind of more vintagey, not super modern. Sure. Um, kind of medium gain. Now the problem with that is I can do tons with it. So when I went to put it on a board, yes, I can do tons with it, but I can't do tons with it programmably. It's not like the knobs are programmable. So I really had to decide, like, how do I want to use this with these other pedals? So that one becomes like the main pedal. It does have, and you've seen me do it. Normally, I'll use the boost side of this pedal with the EQ to uh, actually add gain or kind of restructure the other side of the pedal. Sure. But in this case, I'm, I've changed what I'm doing because I'm using that side of the pedal as an EQ and a boost for the clean sound. So if I want yeah. to brighten things up. It sounds, it sounds killer. Yeah, that is great. So, now I can hit it with that and make it bright. Yeah. It, it works great, but really, we can go from that to the light speed. Um, the light speed would be next. It, basically, the light speed is before the tilt. Now, one thing to keep in mind, not to make this confusing, is per preset, I can totally reroute these pedals any way I want. Oh. But as a default, the light speed actually hits the tilt. So the light speed by itself, that's my clean. Yep. The light speed is just adding a little bit, but that once again, that's by default. The light speed can do more than that, but what I want it to do is hit the, uh, the tilt. So, yeah, bigger, more pushed, more ampy, you know? Because I wanted some place to go with the tilt. Like, I, here's my start. I can, I can do this, I can add the fuzz for soloing, or I can add the light speed for just more. That's yeah. kind of my more thing. But then the light speed by itself, so I wanted everything to be really usable by themselves or into the, and it took forever. I mean, oh, sure. it like lab mode to get that figured out. So oh. that's that. That's how that's working. So light speed into the tilt. Like I said, I can change that, but that's how it's uh, it's set up. And then, yeah, the other, the other pedal is I put a rat on there, literally just to snap myself out of it. Yeah. <laughs> just to have like something that is so different. Yeah. So yeah, the rat, high gain, and then the uh, that XTS EQ is there just to enhance the the rat a little bit. So when they when they when XTS tweaks your EQ mm -hmm. and that's just the G7, what do they what do they do to it? Yeah, they basically are, are moving it into all the mid voices. So the, I think the original one goes down to what a hundred or something. Right this right. one only goes down to eight hundred. Oh, okay. So it, it makes it more mid centric. Yeah. Uh, which is really cool, and they do it does sound cleaner. They're quieter. Yeah. You know, I've so, got mine's not modern. It's really yeah you know, like, yeah like they can prohibitive. Be, yeah, really loud. <laughs> they, yeah. Can be, they can be problematic yeah. for sure. But yeah, I mean, so in this case, it's very subtle. It's just adding top end. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, but that's there, like I said, just to, I'm kind of out of tune, huh? That's there just to literally, it was like, man, I, I want higher gain, but I don't want to keep doing the more thing because me as a human being, it's like I find something I like, which is the tilt, and it's like, okay, well, what's the more setting? But it's not like a new setting, it's just more. Sure. The, uh, the, uh, the rat pedal really forces me to just 
go someplace else with it. Right. Know? Well, and overdrive is the toughest thing. You know, it's it, a, it, you need a lot of options because they're. Again, it's kind of a moving target. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that that's been working out great. And then, yeah, I use the big sky for the typical thing. Um, so, like right now, it's just kind of a hall thing, especially if I shut the tuner off. Yeah. And I can, you know, I've got it on an expression, so I can turn it up. Or, or rather, Dunlop. Yeah. yeah. It's just typical hall. Yeah, it sounds great. Though. Oh man, yeah, they, they, that stuff's been around, seems like, for quite a while, and it just works. I, yeah. you know, no reason to try anything else. At least for me, I mean, once again, there's a bunch of great stuff out there. So sure. Don't come at me about, but I'm just saying, like, that just works really well for me. And of course, the, the delay, that's my typical, you know, thing that I do. You know, I can do more of a, like a stereo dual thing. Oh yeah, that's cool. And that's the timeline? Yep, yeah, so, I've got that on an expression too, so I can turn that up. Add a spring to it. Oh, that's great. I can add some top end. Oh, that's great. And then the, uh, the Eventide, um, I use that for kind of mod stuff. So like right now, the Eventide's doing the, uh, basically a tremolo. Mm -hmm. But I might use, uh, let's, I think, yeah, I can do uh, more of a, the Leslie thing. Yeah, cool. And then I've got that on an expression. So speed it up. Oh, so is it tied into the same expression as the, they yep. can share them? Yeah, absolutely. I can, I can have this expression based on how the G3 works. I could have oh. that one pedal change everything if I wanted. Oh, so it's not running into the into the pedal, it's running into the G3. Yeah, it's routed there. Okay. Yeah, so all the mapping happens there, which is absolutely brilliant. Oh, so yeah, I great. can send either one of those expression pedals pretty much wherever I want. So in this case, it's handling yeah. rotary speeds. Oh, that's great. Well, yeah. and your volume is just running from the guitar into the uh, no, into it, or is the, the volume in the, the G3 The volume as is well? actually in the G3. Um, it's basically like an insert, but it's it's a loop. Yeah, and I'm a big fan of this Lely. Um, oh, Layla, yeah, Lely, yeah. Layla, I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I I just I've, said I'm a big fan. I don't even know how it's pronounced. You know what? I get two of them, yeah. and I don't know how they're pronounced either. Yeah, big I, fan. Oh, yeah, where yeah. are they from? Yeah. I don't, don't know. Don't know. Scandinavia. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But, but yeah, there's no moving parts, because I just murder volume pedals. I don't know why, but this one doesn't have all the stuff that's going to break. It's based on magnetics and like a voltage control amplifier. Yeah. It's just so smooth. So smooth. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's in an insert. You can see there's a volume insert there. Oh. So what's nice is that's why I have these separate from the board is sometimes I just want to take the board. I don't need anything with a treadle on it. I don't, I don't need it. And that way, because it's uh, just an insert, it's normaled. If I don't have a volume pedal, I, I'm still passing signal. Sure. That's the, the whole deal with that. Um, and then I do have this setup. I can do wet cab, dry cab. I can do stereo like we're doing to the inputs of the amps. Um, I can do effects loops in stereo. Um, Barry just like covered every bass. He was, God, he, that's great. He covered stuff I didn't even think about. Right. He's like, well, you're going to need this. And I was like, yeah, I knew I was going to need that. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know I was going to need that, but that's brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. <laughs>